very good morning to all my dear friends i am prashant mawani i hope you are doing good today is uh, 14th september and the thing is that uh, there will be no issue of the hindu today uh, but i have got uh, four special topics uh, for you guys and the reason why i have come out with this a uh, special topics rather than keeping a day off is uh, i just want to make sure that your continuity is maintained so let's uh, crack on the first item that we have is uh, milex m i l e x now the milex is basically milex stands for military exercise uh, the first military exercise under this umbrella of bimstack is going to take place in our country and the reason why it is in news it's bit controversial we'll go through it as well but first of all let me quickly take you through uh, basic details about uh, this bimstack uh, in bimstack you can see here you have seven countries here five countries uh, of uh, this bimstack uh, they are from south asian region and two of them falls in this southeast asian region so basically we can say that this bimstack is a bridge that connects sark as well as asean right it can work and in in fact it works like a bridge it, it has a platform for intra regional cooperation between sark and asean members so bimstack in this context is a very important uh, group the second thing is uh, if we go through some facts about bimstack we find that 1.5 billion people live in this region 22% of it represents uh, 22% of global population and combined gdp is 2.7 trillion uh, dollar uh, uh, since the uh, last 5 years it has clocked uh, on an average uh, 6.5% gdp growth which is not bad at all now the reason why it is in news is because uh, nepal has decided that it is going to pull out of this military exercise this military exercise is going to take place in our country in pune and uh, it has uh, nepal has said that is it's not going to be there it won't be able to make it uh, but uh, it's quite a bit ironical that uh, at the end of this month that is september 2018 nepal is going to have a very long 12 day long military exercise with china so what we can understand from this thing is one that uh, this cancellation indicates that nepal's reluctance to see bimstack take on a significant security role the second one if we read between the lines we find that nepal's strategic drift you know it's drif drifting apart from us and it's getting closer and closer to china now as far as this current uh, government of india or modi government's uh, foreign policy is concerned we have seen that it's it's very innovative it's very to the point it has you know so far worked with means we have seen a sort of uh, drastic change have have uh, we were you know taken by the world countries and things like that at present it is most of the time you find india 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 everywhere but when it comes to nepal when it comes to maldives uh, we cannot uh, say that thing with confidence i think uh, if i be very clear and blunt i would say that we have failed uh, right as far as nepal maldives and one or two other countries are concerned because uh, one of the reason why we have uh, you know this uh, turbulent relationship with nepal is uh, back in 2015 you know we were uh, we were um, interfering with this constitution uh, uh, constitution drafting or you say, you can say adoption process uh, that was going on in nepal and the second thing is uh, this madheshi blockade this two things uh, or this two reasons uh, that we that we can see on our screens you know this this are the two reasons because of which uh, there are many political parties in nepal they are not happy with india and this is one of the reason why they have you know protested uh, so strongly that uh, the prime minister of nepal was forced uh, to announce this thing that nepal is not going to take part in this milex so what we can make here is that uh, the more mistakes we make you know we are creating or generating more opportunities for china now china is a country with uh, deeper pockets that means uh, it has huge amount of money to invest Uh, so this is a reason you know easily it can 5 billion or 6 billion or something is nothing it's not that big deal for china so it can offer big ticket projects and uh, uh, this will attract you know china is a magnet uh, at present it is attracting all these countries but it's not always that rosy picture you know the reality is not that beautiful 
many a times we find that uh, CPEC is in news. Uh, CPEC stands for China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Recently, Malaysia has also, you know, expressed its uh, reservation about this Belt and Road Initiative. So what we can do is we can highlight these uh, things uh, to Nepal. We can tell them about Sri Lanka's Hamban Tota or Malaysia or Pakistan. Uh, uh, the problem uh, with uh, India-Nepal relationship, one more thing is that it's been our fault. You know, we have announced big projects, but when it comes to implementing them, when it comes to, you know, meeting these deadlines and project management, we have failed. And uh, China is very good with these things. Uh, you know, China is very fast in infrastructure and other sort of uh, project execution. Uh, Nepal is a landlocked country, as we all know, and... Uh, India and Bangladesh. These are the two countries, uh, right, uh, through which it can or it can supply something outside or it can bring something in. So for that, uh, to keep this, you know, thing win-win for every one of us, uh, we decided uh, for this Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal framework, motor vehicle agreement, basically. But this one as well has not produced that much result. If I, if I update you, give you the latest update, then Bhutan is not part of this thing. Bhutan has said that we'll come back and join you guys, but for time being, BIN is the thing that you should go ahead with. Later on, we can make it BBIN. Uh, Thailand too has uh, confirmed that uh, it is also, uh, you know, uh, going to stay away from its military is going to stay away from this military exercise of BIMSTEC. So. This is the time, you know, we need to sit down and we need to analyze that why this sort of things are going on uh, in, in our neighborhood. With this, dear friends, uh, that's everything in that topic. But before I move ahead, I would like to introduce all of you to our pen drive and tablet courses, particularly of UPSC that you can get it for just 22,500. If you compare this thing with traditional coaching classes, then you pay some 2 lakh rupees plus over there. And uh, to be honest, you won't find that good quality as well. Uh, but here... Uh, best teachers deliver this pen drive and tablet course. You know, these lectures are delivered by best faculties of our country. You can go through them as many times as you like. So all these benefits are associated with our pen drive course. Uh, find out more about it on uh, on, on studyaq.com. You can download the PDF of uh, today's lecture from my FB page and Twitter handle. And please make sure that you are sharing this file as well as video with other students as well. Now, uh, second topic that I have for you, it's a big question, right? Uh, is it a return of Cold War? Cold War uh, that used to, you know, the Cold Wars were going on for a very long period of time between, USS, uh, between USSR and USA, since 50s to 1991. And then everything was all right, but now we find that, again, we find this sort of Cold War situation, you know, we are finding that major powers, they are either on USA side or either they are on China or Russia side. At present, Russia and China are like one side, just like Britain and France and UK are. So it all started with this uh, Ukraine crisis, you know, when this was annexed by Russia, this portion called Crimea, when it was annexed by Russia at that point. Since then, we have seen that... Uh, this relationship between Russia and Western world has been very turbulent, isn't it? Now, the thing is, historically, if we, if we go back and look at this relationship of uh, Russia and China, then they were not that cordial. But at present, the way things are going on, or you can say this uh, circumstances have brought uh, the two giants together. Uh, a very, you know, interesting thing about this combination is that one is powerful in military and the other one is powerful in money or uh, economy wise so this is you can say a very dangerous fit as far as the world is concerned and uh, russia has always you know meddled with this america as well as uh, american as well as european domestic affairs uh, so uh, this is something that is going to be a matter of concern for this america as well as western world uh, this military exercise the biggest in the world probably is being conducted in uh, Russia as we are speaking now. Now Russia and China uh, joined military exercise and uh, the other thing is uh, to defend uh, European nations, particularly small nations. Uh, after this Ukraine crisis, uh, this was announced by, this idea was proposed by Emmanuel Macron who is president of France. He said that we need to come out with this European defense force. Only then, you know, we would be able to defend our small countries or our continent from this sort of encroaching. 
as far as India is concerned, we should maintain strategic autonomy. We have good relationship with China. We have good relationship with USA, with Russia, everyone. So it's a big opportunity for us to make sure that we are not jumping into it, but we are making the most out of whatever things are going on. Of course, we don't want to see a violent world. But if they are going to argue and heated arguments and if they're not buying and selling from each other, then India can play a very important role in filling that gap. Third item is about malnourishment. Uh, now, World Hunger Index uh, is uh, every year it is published by Food and Agriculture Organization. Now, what we find is uh, as far as this under five age group is concerned, uh, there has been a drastic increase in obesity. Second thing is that uh, uh, even today we have this highest number of school age children who suffer from extreme thinness. Undernourishment rate, as far as this under five year child's are, child is concerned, you have 14.5 and uh, mortality is 5%. Wasting, there is low height for, uh, low height for, uh, low weight for height, sorry, it's uh, 21% and stunting, that is low height for age is 38.4%, which is very bad. If we compare ourselves with China, then we find that it is 9.6 overall. But it is 1.1, 1.8, and 6.3, you know, below this double digit uh, figure. Uh, we need double digit in GDP expansion, but we don't need double digit in this sort of thing. Now, there are many reasons working behind this situation in our country. The first one is climate change, or, you know, because when you have this wheat or some other crops, uh, they, these crops are temperature sensitive. So in global warming, you know this uh, on an average the temperature has gone up a little bit so this hampers the production of wheat and then wheat will become expensive and if it becomes expensive then it will be out of reach of many poor people and they won't be able to provide balanced diet to their kids and then we will have all this mortality and wasting and other things the second and one of the most important thing is that lack of proper sanitation this open san open defecation is a thing uh, that is creating problems for our kids uh, what happens is that uh, this uh, uh, this flies you know they will they will sit on this uh, uh, fecal material and then they fly back to the food item so because of this sort of things you know it it, it works like you know spreading this uh, this this various different diseases and once small kids a child you know gets affected from this sort of heavy po food poisoning and other things then it will it will basically you know create a damage uh, that child will not be able to grow in terms of height or weight. It depends on each and individual cases, but these are the negative impact of this lack of proper sanitation in our country. Uh, then we also find that holes, uh, unwholesome diet as well as unhealthy dietary preferences are in trend at present kids most of the time. You find that uh, they eat only this sort of items, burgers and pizza and other things. Uh, but uh, this is something that is not healthy for them. Uh, so what we can do is we can create an environment around us and we can learn from Japan. Uh, Japan's uh, schools, you know, they provide wholesome meals rather than packet or uh, processed food or junk food. Junk food is not allowed at all to kids over there at, as far as schools are concerned. And we can learn uh, best things from Japan. We can learn best things from Israel and other countries who are expert in this thing. And based on that thing, we need to customize our plan and then we have to implement it in our country here. Uh, fourth item that I have is Digital India, Jam Trinity, that is Jandan, Aadhaar and Mobile. With the help of this Jam Trinity, we have saved 90,000 crore rupees, which is not bad at all. And we have saved uh, you know, money from, uh, from this scheme as well. It's called Ujala. Remember, some 50,000 rup uh, crore rupees we have saved. So, total 90,000 crore rupee uh, we have saved from DBT or this digital platform with the help of this digital platform. Second thing is that uh, common service centers uh, in 2 lakh gram panchayats are connected with internet services. So, 300 various different services are available at grassroots level. Employment generation is concerned. 124 BPOs have arrived in our country and we are talking about digital India here. So they are here in our country and they are operating in some 101 small towns of our country. So it's creating jobs as well for our youngsters. 
as far as net neutrality is concerned we took a stand right uh, we promoted net neutrality uh, and uh, digital india is a thing you know because of which we have seen a sort of drastic change as far as the way people use their phone and have you know phone or internet let's say for example it has empowered people in g20 platform india clearly stated that uh, social media platforms if they are misused you know it won't be accepted or tolerated if someone is trying to break the country then this is not going to happen and it has warned as well we have warned right uh, it minister warned that uh, this global platforms they need to do something about it or they will be in trouble with the law uh, india's uh, growing digital profile uh, is very you can say extraordinary we have 130 crore people living in our country out of that 100, 121 crore people they have their mobile phone and 122 crore have enrolled themselves in this Aadhaar. So nearly 50 crore internet users are there in our country. And a digital payment ecosystem has also seen a sort of big boost, you know, because, uh, particularly after this demonetization uh, of uh, 2016. More and more people, they have started using wallets and other things. Uh, so we find that uh, nearly you know, there has been a 200% increase in this digital payment ecosystem. Our target uh, for electronics manufacturing is uh, particularly all those items, uh, you know, digital items or products that, uh, that allows us to use these digital technologies. We have decided that we are going to double our production and our target is uh, to, to create a market of uh, $1 trillion here. Silicon Valley is a very good place you know it very well that uh, it's all over the world it is quite famous for this uh, for these new ideas and you know this uh, this electronic world mobile and data and other things so what we need to do is we need to learn from them uh, best business practices or how creativity is injected and all these things uh, and it's not just uh, silicon valley if there are other places as well around the world like finland is a very good place uh, from where you can learn so many things uh, as far as digital India is concerned. So we need to uh, rop in all those great ideas, good ideas, successful mantras. We have to go through failures and success, uh, for things that have failed. And then we need to create our own customized plan and implement it. But this, dear friends, uh, let me take you through four items that we have. The first one is that uh, Justice Ranjan Gagoi is going to be the next Chief Justice of our country. This has been declared by law ministry prime minister narendra modi will attend ashara mubaraka uh, it's as a, a sort of uh, occasion or a festival that is celebrated by daudi bohra community uh, second third one is about chandrayaan chandrayaan is going to be a bit special because it is going to land on south pole where the world has not been you know ever and susma swaraj ji uh, she has reached uh, russia and she's there for this I R I G C T E C. That's India Russia Intergovernmental Commission on Technical uh, Technical and Economic Cooperation. And the second thing that uh, whilst uh, she was heading towards uh, Russia, she took a stop in Turkmenistan, and over there uh, she had a chat with or sort of conversation with uh, her counterpart. That means Foreign Minister of Turkmenistan. Uh, this is your answer here, Chagos Island, and uh, uh, this is uh, your new question. Can you give me a reason what, why we find this many road, uh, red dots or so, uh, sort of circles uh, in various different parts of the world? What's, what's the relationship of these circles with each other or these countries with each other? These are your answers. Mauritius is right answer. I have got two questions for you guys. And that's everything in today's discussion. Enjoy your studies uh, tomorrow. Hindu will be printed, so we'll be back to normal. For now, please uh, give me permission and uh, enjoy your studies and make sure you share it with other students. Jai Hind.